Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Uh, welcome back. Uh, we are still in chapter 7, Production Planning and Control. The last part from this chapter is talking about scheduling. In in there, imagine there are imagine now you are working at the production line. Um, every day there's a lots of job that coming into your production line. So how you going to schedule all the job? Let's say today when you go to the production line, you see you have the order from twenty customer. So which order that you need to do first? Okay. So, this is what is about scheduling. Eh? Schedule means that uh, with so many jobs that you will have, how are we going to assign or sequence all the job so that it meet all the uh, customer demand and uh, without any delay okay. same thing to yourself huh? at one time how many assignment that you have many right and each of the assignment will have different due date and each of the assignment uh, required different timing different uh, the amount of time required to complete those assignment is also different from one task to another task. So, how you plan or how you assign, how you schedule your assignment, which assignment that you, you have to do first, which assignment that uh, you have to do later. Okay. So, in industry management, uh, industry management have a, a, a guide on how to come up with this uh, scheduling. Okay. So, one of the uh, popular methods eh, in schedule all this job is by sequencing. Okay. So, in sequencing method, um, specify the order in which job should be performed at work center. Okay. The, the intention is we want to schedule, eh, we want to specify the job that we have to do in one work center. And... In this uh, technique, uh, sequencing, uh, there is four rules uh, normally be practiced, which is first come first first, FCFS, short processing time, EDD, earliest due date, and LPT, longest production processing time. So it means that when we say it's first come first, uh, that means which job come first, we do that one first. For SPT, shortest processing time, we will select those job that requires required the most minimum time to complete first. Then we continue to those most uh, difficult which take longer time. EDD, earliest due date, is basically we based on due date. Those order that going to due is going to be proceed first. And for LPT, longest processing time, the way on how we arrange the job is based on the longest process, the, the, the longest time required to complete the job. Means that we're going to do the task that require the longest time follow but then only we go for the simple one um, whatever method that we use uh, actually we cannot say which uh, either EDD is the best or LPT is the best uh. Uh, the judgment whether which method is the best is basically will based on these four indicator Average completion time, utilization, average number of jobs in the system, and average job lateness. Different model that you use will give you different value of this four indicator. And the judgment which uh, method is most suitable uh, to, 
to to your application will be based on this port indicator. So let's look one example here. Let's say we have five job pending now, and as seen, you can see job A, job B, job C, job D, and job E. And the job, uh, the time required to complete each job is also different, and the due date is known. Okay. For example, for job A, uh, we need about six days to complete the job, and the due date is another next eight days from now, from today. Okay, if uh, let's start with a uh, first uh, model, which is first come first serve. That means we will do job A first, since job A come first, followed by job B, job C, job D, and job E. Okay, that is mean by first come first serve. So, in first come first serve model, okay, uh, you can see under job work, you do A first, 6 days. After A complete, you will do B. That means, you, uh, you, uh, the job B will complete on day 8. The flow time actually tell you the date you complete. Okay. After B, we continue job C. And job C required another 8 days. So, which means that, we will complete job C on day 16. So, similar to D and E. So, means that if you look from this table, we can see that uh, we need about 28 days to complete all the job. So, if you total the job work time, you can get 28. That means job A, B, C, D and E will complete in 28 days. And Flow time, sir. Flow time actually is the date, the day that each job complete. You add on, it was called a flow time. Okay. And if you look on the job due date, we know that job A is going to do for another eight days. But when you look on the flow time, the job will be complete on the day six. Means that job A is not delay. Is actually we can complete in advance before the due date. Job B will only complete on day 8. But the due date is on the 6. Means that job B is delayed for 2 days. So that's why you can see the job lateness there is 2. Job C, similarly job C, uh, the job C will complete on day 16, but the due date is another 18 days. So, means that job C is not delayed. So we can still ship the uh, shipment uh, on time. So, if you look on job D, job D will only complete on day 19, but the due date is on day 15, which means that job D is delay for four days and finally job e job e will only comp will complete on day 28 but the due date is on the day 23 which means that the job e is delay for five days so you, when you total up the job lateness you get 11 so based on total of job work time 28 Flow time 77 and job lateness, we can calculate the four indicators. Average completion time okay, is a sum of total flow time, mean flow time, divided by number of jobs. So our total flow time is 77, divided by 5, then you get 15.4 days. So in average, we can complete all the jobs in roughly about 15.4 days. Utilization is total job work time divided by sum of total flow time. Yeah. 
total job work time is 28 divide by sum of total flow time 77 and then you get 36.4%. Average number of job in the system sum of the total flow time which is 77 divide by total job work time which is 28 and then you get 2.75 job. Average job lateness total late days divide by number of job we get about 20 2.2 days. So if you look on this value, um, the average completion time that mean uh, in average we can complete each job in 15.4 days. Uh, how you fully use, utilization of the job that you you have is about 36.36.4%. Average number of job in the system that mean Basically, in average, you have about 2.75 job pending at your area. And average job lateness, roughly the job lateness is about 2.2 days. Okay. So, for average completion times, of course, the lower the better. Utilization should be the higher the better. Average number of job in the system should be the lower the better. And average job lateness should be the lower the better as well. Okay, that is the value, uh, the value, uh, the value for first come first. If we arrange our job based on first come first serve, what happen if arrange our job based on sequencing SPT short shortest processing time, which means that. Based on this uh, sequence, we have to do B first because B only required two days to complete. Followed by D, uh, followed by D, which required three days, A six days, C eight days, and finally E nine days. Okay, so same thing. Do the same thing. Calculate the flow time. Calculate the job due date and calculate the job lateness. Similarly, as what. Uh, you have undergo under first come first serve. So, based on this um, sequence, we can see that the job, all the job is still will be completed between 28 days. Okay? In 28 days, we will complete all these five jobs. But now you can see the flow time is less than first come first serve. Uh, using first come first serve, the, fl the total flow time is 77, but using SPT, we can see the total flow time now is reduced to 65. Same thing to the job lateness. Uh, we can see that the job lateness is also reduced to 9. When we apply uh, first come first serve uh, rules, uh, the, job, the total job lateness is 11. So based on all this figure, we calculate the indicator, the four indicators. So now we can see the average completion, completion time is reduced to 13 days. Utilization is increased to 43.1%. Average number of jobs in the system is also decreased. And average job lateness is also decreased to 1.8 days. What happens if we arrange the job according to earliest due date? Earliest due date we means that we will do the job that having a lowest due date. So for this example, we can see that job B actually having due date of 6 the minimums the most minimum followed by a 8 days followed by d 15 days c 18 days and finally e 23 days so again similarly we can see the total job work time is still 28 means that we still can complete the job in 28 days the total flow time is 68 and the total job lateness is 6. Based on this value, you can calculate the indicators. Average completion time is 13.6. 
utilization is little bit lower than SPT which is 41.2, average number of job in the system 2.43, but the job lateness is very low which is 1.2 days. What happen if we go by longest processing time? Okay. So same th that mean in these rules we will do the most longest uh, task, which mean job E. Job E required nine days to complete uh, to to complete. So we will do E first, followed by C, which required eight days, followed by A six days, and then D three days, and finally B two days. The job, the total job work time is still similar, 28, which means that we still can complete the job within 28 days. But now we can see the flow time, the total flow time is very high, which is 103. And the job lateness is also very high, which is 48. So when we calculate the indicators, we can see the average completion time is 20.6 days. Utilization is very low, 37.2%. Average number of jobs in the system is very high, which is 3.68. And average job lateness is also very high, which is 9.6 days. So if we put up on the summary, we compare with all the rules as first come first search, SPT, EDD, LPT. So we can see yeah, as uh, for average completion time, we can see that SPT is having a lowest value. In terms of utilization, again, SPT also have a highest value. In terms of average number in the in, of job in the system, again, SPT. Yeah, uh, is having the most lowest value but if we if we look on the average lateness edd is the best so as a conclusion we can see there's no one sequence rules the excel or criteria we can see the aspect spt actually do, does well on minimizing flow time and number of jobs in the system. But SPT move long job to the end which may result in dissatisfied customer. First come first serve does not do especially well or poorly on any criteria but is perceived as fair by customer. EDD is mainly to focus to minimize the lateness. Let's see you have um, many jobs which are um, expected to be delayed. Okay? Uh, for example, probably you have three jobs that are going to be delayed. Uh, can we do something to save this job? Yes, the answer is yes. We can further evaluate all these jobs. Uh, Calculate the critical ratio, and based on this critical ratio, we can re re reschedule that our uh, our job. So CR uh, critical ratio as an index, uh, it basically is an index number found by dividing a time remaining until the due date by the work time remaining on the job. Okay, so you can see the formula CR is equal to due date minus two day date. Divide by work lead time remaining. So one example here. Let's say you have three jobs that are expected to be delayed. Job A, job B and job C. So using the formula, we calculate the critical ratio. And we can see that if your uh, the CR value is below than 1, that means is going to be late jobs which is job b yeah? you can see job b equal to one below the one job c 
is just on time okay and job a still uh, have opportunity to uh, to be safe i mean to uh, to meet the the, the, the timeline what happened so in 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 sequencing method basically we are scheduling the job in one word session that mean one task which is involved one task what happened if you have a job which required two word session for example um uh, you have job a b c d uh, then all this job need to go through two machine 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 y and machine machine x and machine y and the sequence must be uh, the sequence is considered that mean after you do x then only you can do y so for this type of job um the best methods to prepare the scheduling is by using Johnson rules. Okay, so this method actually will help us because when you have two job, um, uh, two uh, two job uh, for two two machine, while the job is undergo machine number one, machine number two is either. That, then this will, will cause some idols huh? so it can increase the idle time huh? uh, in your production so this uh, johnson rules basically you can minimum huh? you can mean the idea is to minimize the total ed time in the work center for both huh? let's say you have two work center for the we try we try to minimize the idle time for both uh, work center Okay, this is actually the step. Okay, uh, you need to have a list of job and the time required for each uh, work center, and choose the job. Okay, step number two: choose the job with the shortest activity. Okay, and if the shortest time is happen at the first work center, we put we schedule the job first, but if the uh, shortest time is actually happen at second work center, then we will schedule last. Okay. So once you complete uh, the scheduling, you re repeat step two entry working towards the center of the schedule. Okay, let's to make you better understand, let's look some example. Okay, let's say you have this job, you have five jobs here. This five job need to undergo two work center. Work center one, which is the drill press. After drill press, it need to be continued to work center number two, which is leg. Okay, job B, C, and and you you do have a time there. Okay, times required for each work center. Okay. So step number one, you have the list of the job. Step number two we have to select uh, the shortest processing time so if you look here the shortest processing time is two which is on job a at work center two so since this happened at work center two that means job a have to schedule last So that means job A is done. The next, looking for the next lowest processing time. So the next one is 3 for job B in work center 1. So work center 1, that means we have to schedule B first. So the next one, A is done, B is done the next shortest processing time is four 
which is belong to job C at work center 2. So since it's at work center 2, we have to schedule at the back. So job D is complete. So next, look on the, the next shortest processing time is 7. Both actually got 7. Eh? For job D, 7 in work center 2. But for E, 7 at work center 1. No problem. Since for D, since it's work center 2, we put at the back. For E, is a work center 1, we put at the first. So, based on this analysis, we have gained our schedule. That means, to get and minim to in order to minimize your either time, you have to schedule your job. Start with B, follow by E, D, C, and A. Okay, let's look on this uh, table. At work center one, okay. the job sequence is B, E, D, C, A. Time in zero. B required three hours. So that means works job B enter work session number one and will be out from work center number one at after three hours. So once work center one uh, B is complete, at work center one we will continue with job E. Okay, so in three out 10 because E requires 7 hours to complete. Once complete job E, we continue at work center 1, we continue with D, 10 and D required 10 hours and we will E work out from work center 1 at 20, at hour 20. So once complete day, con continue with C in 20 so C required 8 hours and it will complete on 20 at hour 28. After complete C, con straight away continue A, job A, and job A required 5 hours and the job A will complete at uh, hour 33. Okay, okay. let's look on work center 2. That means for work center 2, at time zero is either because work center two have to wait for job B to complete. So when the job B complete, job co job B complete at hour three. That mean time in is three. And at work center two. Job B required 6 hours. So that means job B will finish by 9. Hour 9. After complete B, at work center 2, definitely work center 2 want to continue with job E. But unfortunately, job E is not yet ready. Job E will only complete at hour 10. So means that we only can start job E at work center 2 at hour 10. And job 2, uh, job E required 12 hours. That means it will complete at hour 22. Once we finish job E, we will continue with job D. But have the job D completed? Yes, job D has completed at hour 20. So that mark, that mean after complete E we can straight away continue with job D. And job D required seven hours to complete. That mean it will complete at hour twenty nine. So after complete D, look we have to continue with job C. Did job did, uh, did job C have been completed at work center one? Yes, eh? because C has completed. Uh, at hour 28. So we can straight away proceed job C. Job C required 23, uh, required 4 hours. So we complete at hour 33. 
So once it's complete, see we notice that A also have been completed at from workstation number one. We can immediately continue with work job A and we will con job A required two hours and we continue uh, we completed the job A at hour 35. So look on this one, that means the total time required to complete this job, this five job is 35 hours. And um, at workstation one, the idea times, uh, once uh, at work center one, the five job complete within 30, 33 hours. But the total time to complete all the job is 35, that means... It, uh, to, mission number one have either time of two hours and what happened at mission number work station work center two eh? work center two at the earliest stage eh? three hours is uh, either there and we have another one hour either after complete job b because during that time e is not yet ready and work center work center two is either so the total Either time for mission 2 is 4 hours. We can also, um, based on the information, we can construct the uh, jo Johnson's rule diagram. Which you can see more clearer where is the either time. So it's almost similar, only your X axis now is a time. Okay? Your Y axis is machine number one and work center number one and work center number two. So the sequence is similar, follow B, E, D, D C, A. And from this uh, diagram, you can see more clearly after complete at work session number two, number one is straight away go to work session number two, processing at number two and so on. Okay, what happened if you have job that have three machines? Okay. So, same thing, we can also uh, try to come up with the scheduling which minimum either time uh, by using Johnson rules. So, for this uh, if you have more than uh, two machines, uh, the step, we, we only have one additional step. Huh? That means at the beginning, before you follow step number one, there is one step that you that you need to do. Uh, from the, let's say you have five job here, five job one, job number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. And all these jobs need to go through machine A, machine B, and machine C. So we have to start by regenerating the information huh? from three column, three machine. We have to uh, to make it become two column. So how to do that? Uh, three column become two columns. Huh? That mean uh, in column number one, machine A plus machine B. You add the time from the original data, you add the time from machine A and machine B. And for the second column, we have to add up machine B and machine C. Okay. Once you have generated the table, then we can start come up with the sequencing, uh, the sequence. Okay. You go to step number two. Okay. So look on the generating table, which one is having the lowest time? Okay, so we can see the lowest time. Is eight. So the reason again is eight. And if it's happened at the first column, we will schedule it first. If it's happened, uh, the, the, the shortest time is at column number two, then it will schedule later. 
So once we have uh, the job has been scheduled, it is eliminated from the list. So follow, re repeat the same thing, re uh, repeat step number two and number three, working toward the center of the sequence. So from this uh, example, so we can see that our sequence is one, four, five, job number one, followed by job number follow, four, followed by job number five, followed by job number three, and finally job number two. And, but when we want to calculate eh, what is the either time at mission A, mission B, and mission C, we have to uh, we have to use the original data okay so you can same thing here we will start with uh, job number one time in zero at mission a it required four hours that means it will out four so after finish job number one continue at mission a eh, we will continue with job number four number five, number three, and number two. So, move to mission number B, mission B. Mission number B can only be started after A has gone through mission number A, mission A. So, for example, for job one, uh, job one complete mission A at hour four. So, that means it will continue job uh, at mission B at hour 4 and complete at 8. After complete at mission B, the job will proceed to mission C. It will start at 8 and then finish at hour 14. Same thing eh, as we prepare for to mission. We can also construct, uh, to get clearer picture, we can also construct the johnson rose uh, diagram again. The X axis is the time and Y axis is the machine. Mission A, Mission B and Mission C. So through this diagram, you can see more clearer. At Mission A, start with job number 1, number followed by 4, 5, 3 and 2. Once mission uh, have uh, one it the job have undergo mission A, it will be moved to mission B. It will continue at mission B, but somehow you can see be at mission B between job one and job four. Job one complete, but somehow job number four is still in progress at mission A. So there is a either time there. So after at hour ten. Job number four complete, then only we can continue job number four at mission B. Again, at mission B, job number four complete at hour 12. But we cannot continue with job number five because job number five is still in progress at mission A. Job number 5 is only complete at mission A at hour 13. That means we can start continue job uh, 5, job number 5 at mission, B, at mission B at hour 13. So, same thing you can see after job number 5, it still have some either there because job number 3 is not yet completed at mission A. Same thing to... Uh, between job 3 and job 2 at work center B, at mission B, where we finish the job 3 but somehow job 2 is still in progress at mission A. Okay. So, based on this diagram, you can easily calculate the either time for mission A, mission B, mission C, and mission C. Okay. So, overall, all the job were complete in 49 hours. Yeah, we can also can get the completion time eh, for all the job, which is uh, 49 hours. Um, you can uh, visit these two websites um, to get more example about uh, Johnson's rules at uh, three work center, three work station. Johnson rule is good in minimizing the 
either time. But Johnson rule does not uh, consider the due date. It's not like a sequencing. Eh? In sequencing method, we do consider the due date. Eh? But for this uh, method, Johnson rule's method, uh, the due date is uh, not considering. And again, eh, in um, for this scheduling, eh, uh, what been practiced uh, in the organization, eh, there is a software also that can help production eh, to prepare their scheduling. Uh, this software, eh, basically, they need some input about MRP, about boom, about inventory. Eh. Because you need some input data here. Once you install all the input data, we can uh, this software can be used to prepare the scheduling that can minimize the either time. What happened eh? uh, if for servicing uh, organization? How we, let's say, uh, um, one company that uh, offer a machine servicing, CNC machine servicing. How they going to, let's say they have five customer around the area and they have two uh, service engineer. How they want to prepare the scheduling, the job schedule for their workers. Huh? So, uh, in reality, yeah, uh, scheduling in for servicing industry um, is more tough huh? because we know that so many variables there. Um, different uh, workers have different capacity. The timing is different, yeah? and uh, usually, yeah, for servicing company. Um, they seldom maintain the inventory yeah? in terms of labor intensity and demand may be variable. So many variable in terms of labor intensity and demand. Legal issue may constrain flexible scheduling and social and behavior issue may be quite important. Huh? We know that when servicing company that involve outside job, um, the behaviorism of the workers is uh, another important character. So, Scheduling in servicing industry is more challenged eh, as compared to manufacturing industry. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Um, please uh, familiarize uh, yourself with uh, the exercise that been provided. Thank you.